What's going on everybody? Welcome to part three of the Kiwi tutorial series. In this video, what we're gonna be talking about is how we can change the screen, the view, the page, whatever the heck you wanna call it, we're calling them screens in Kiwi. So uh, with that, let's get into it. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, import the screen manager. So from kiwi.uix.screen manager, uh, we want to import screen manager. We also wanna import screen because um, we're going to be using that as well. So now coming on down here, <clears throat> rather than Epic App just simply returning connect page, um, we, what we want to do is be able to switch screens between, um, between pages. So uh, in theory, you could go from page to page to page in a very linear manner, but chances are that's not really what you want to do. Um, so instead, really what you want to be able to do is manage your screens with the screen manager. So so what we're going to do here is under the, in this build method, <clears throat> we're not going to return connect page anymore, and instead we're going to build this like screen manager thing. So first of all, self dot self.screen underscore manager is going to be a screen manager object. And then what we want to do is add our, you know, pages or our screens to the screen manager. So what we're going to say is self.connect page is going to be a connect page object. And then what we're going to say is screen equals screen. And uh, we're going to give this screen's name uh, connect. So now anytime we want to reference this screen, we're just going to reference connect <clears throat> the string. So then what we're going to say is screen dot add underscore widget and then self dot connect page. And then finally, we're going to self dot screen manager dot add widget that screen. Cool. So this is what you're going to do every time you want to add a screen that you want to be able to reference by the string. So now what we're going to do is the same thing, but we want some sort of next page. And I'm just going to call this the info page. So self dot info page is equal to an info page object, which doesn't yet exist, but we will create one. Um, then we're going to say screen equals screen. Uh, and in this case, the name will be info screen dot add widget self dot um, connect page uh, info page. And then self dot screen manager dot add widget screen. Cool. So now we've got our two pages. So you should be able to notice the pattern here between these two things. Um, pretty simple. So now we can add you know an infinite number of pages. We can call upon those pages when someone say like clicks a button or something like that. So you could have some sort of nav bar in your app. It can definitely be pretty darn awesome. Now, for us, we don't even have an info page yet, so we probably should do that. Um, also, uh, rather, remember before we returned, we have to return something, right? We return the thing that we want the app to run, right? Because this is the build method. So in this case, we actually are going to return self.screenManager. Cool. Alrighty, so now what we need to do is, like our connect page, we need to create an info page. So coming down here, I'm just gonna throw it right here. I'm gonna call this class info page. It is like the other, uh, uh, pretty sure it's a capital, yeah. It's going to inherit from grid layout. Also, in the init method, um, same thing as before, so self quargs. Um, and then we're basically just going to run, so it's this here, right? So actually I'm just going to copy, come down here, not too far, pasta. And rather than self.calls is two, I'm actually going to say it's one column now. And now what we're going to do is self.message, and this is like a dynamic message, it's not a message that we're just going to set. And apparently, I guess if you use the Kiwi style thing or the Kiwi docs, I don't know what you're supposed to call these things, but they're dot .kv files. They're kind of like CSS for HTML or something like that. Um, no real intention to cover it here. I did cover it in the older series. I just, I just I hate splitting it out like that. I'm assuming if you had like a huge enough app, it would become really useful to have it like split away, like logic in one area and design in another. Um, but I just, I just don't like it, but just understand that does exist. So check that out. It's just the .kv or kv files. I forget what we're supposed to call them. But anyway, if you use that, apparently this little thing doesn't happen. 
Um, but anyway, I'll, well, let me type it out first and then we'll talk about it. So uh, the message will be a label object and the horizontal align is going to be center. And then we also want to do the same thing with vertical align, which in this case is actually middle. Imagine a world where we just use the same terminology for, <laughs> for the same thing. Anyway, <clears throat> font size, 30 or 39, doesn't really matter. Anyway, that's our message, right? It's a label, but it doesn't currently have anything. We need to be able to update this label as needed. So we're gonna first say, you know, trying to connect, but then maybe if there's an error or something, we wanna update it with whatever the error is and so on. So what we need to do <clears throat> is bind a method to it. So we're gonna say self.message.bind, and we're gonna say width is equal to self.update, update, update text width and then we're going to say self.add widget self.message then what we're going to say is in a new method well we need two things we need to update text width and then we need um, the actual message itself so the issue is if you just have so you have a label and then you're going to add stuff to that label that in theory could change the size of things and all that and so you have to just keep updating it and like i said if you have the kv style files or whatever apparently that doesn't happen um like you don't actually have to like resize it yourself or like listen for the resize um so it's probably just because things are called in a different order when you're using those files i really don't know anyway define update underscore info and this will be self message we're going to update the message for this label so we're going to say um, self dot message dot text uh, equals that message so that should just update it for us and then finally we need to do the update text width so we're going to say define update text width and that's self and then anything else but we just don't care um, and in this case, we're just going to say self.message.text uh, underscore size equals self.message.width times 0 0.9. And then we're not worried about um, the Y. So now, <clears throat> that should be good message width. Yeah, so we just want that to take up 90% basically of this page. Like if, it's just like anything, if, if it goes all the way to the edges, it just looks kind of goofy. Okay, cool. So we've got our two pages. We've got them connected to the screen manager. Okay. Now what, all we need to do is figure out how do we, like what do we want to have call these changes, right? So you might have a nav bar or something, but in this case, um, it's just when the user hits join, right? So when they hit join, we wanna change the page or change the screen to this info page that says, hey, we're connecting or, oh, we got an error or whatever, <laughs> okay? So in this case, uh, that's what we wanna do. So what we wanna do now is go to our join button, which is in our connect page and um, cool. So what we want to happen when someone clicks that join button is first of all, we're gonna take this print statement. I'm just gonna get rid of it, but I'm gonna first copy what was inside of it. And I'm gonna say info equals that bit of information. Then we're gonna say, um, well, first what we have to do is, so we, we wanna be able to reference <clears throat> the instance that is running right now. So in order for us to do that, we're gonna say chat app equals epic app and then um, we're going to say uh, chat app dot run but now we can reference things with chat app so we're going to come back up to the join button and we're going to say chat app dot info page dot update info with our info <laughs> And then, um, and so like that'll go to our info page. Where is info page? Updates the info, sets the message text to whatever that message is that we passed, which is the info. Bada boom, bada bing, we get over to this label, which just so happens to also be listening for the resize after we've updated it to set to 90% of the width. Crazy. 
Okay, so we've updated that page. And that info is updated. We just can't see that screen yet. So what we need to do is bring that screen to the forefront. So what we're going to do is a chat app dot screen manager dot current equals boom info. That's it. So anytime you have some sort of thing, right? In this case, our button. So when someone on presses that join button that we created, it runs this method. And if all you wanted to do was change the page, boom, this is the only line that you would need to run. But, I'm sorry, this is the only line that you need to run. But we wanted to update that info, whatever info was on that info page. So we ran this first and did some other stuff, saved some other stuff. Um, but basically to change the screen, one line of code right there. Cool. So honestly, that should be everything we need up to this point, change the screen. So let's test it out. Let's run it. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's not going to be able to connect, but it'll at least tell us. Cool. So it says attempting to join um, that server or that IP, that port as username. Cool. And it changed the screen. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Okay. So now what we want to do is connect all of this to our actual socket code and start building that page. Now, uh, the way that we're going to do that, if you go to the text-based version of this tutorial, I'll post probably in both versions, this version and the next version, the socket server.py and then the client socket or basically socket client.py files. I'm not going to go over those at all. I, I, I feel like, uh, like there's nothing new in there. The server is, the server code is exactly what we did in the sockets tutorial. And then the client dot pi code is like just slightly modified so there's really nothing new there if you want to learn about that stuff at the end of this video i strongly suggest go to the socket series it's all already released so you can go through those if you want to learn more um about those uh otherwise i guess just stay tuned to the next tutorials quick <laughs> quick shout out to my recent channel members Matej and Vizarad Kumar. Thank you guys very much for your support. You guys are incredible. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be talking about scheduling tasks. Um, so setting up things like functions and methods and stuff like that to run on some sort of schedule using the Kiwi clock. Um, otherwise, uh, that's it for now. Questions, comments, concerns, love notes, whatever. Feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'm going to see you guys in the next video.